Hello, I'm uh, Jordan Bush, and uh, you can find me on the SecKC Discord as Mr. R. I'm going to give a talk about Universal Radio Hacker, how you can clone remotes, replay the remotes, and kind of go into a little detail on how you can analyze them, you know, like fuzz them. So here's a disclaimer. Uh, don't think that uh, you can just clone all willy-nilly. There are some consequences if you're not careful. Everything is listening on that frequency, so it's not just your own device. So say you're trying to make your fan go a faster speed, well, you're transmitting too high and you just blew up your neighbor's garage door opener or something because you're fuzzing. So be careful. Everything I say here, don't like take it word for word and blame me for something you did. Oh, yeah. What is Universal Radio Hacker? Uh, it's essentially a tool that allows you to use software to find radios to listen in, uh, dissect radio signals that are broadcast on ISM bands. I mean, probably you can use other bands too, but that's what it's known for. It can decode uh, common modulation frequencies like phase shift keying, on-off or yeah, on-off shift keying, and uh, frequency shift keying. There's a GitHub, I'll have a link in the, uh, in the Slack deck too. Uh, oh, I got ahead of myself, but essentially what I just talked about here, it can do. Uh, so here is what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to take that sky projector there that has lasers and a cool little light effects. Uh, I actually found it at one of those Amazon liquidation places. You know, they have those big bins. You can find a lot of random crap. Uh, but they go about 50 bucks on Amazon. It runs on 433 megahertz, and I opened it up. There was basically unlabeled chips, and uh, I couldn't find any FCC listings, which, I mean, it's ISM part 15, but I believe it has to have FCC listings, so I couldn't go on a, and look up the board. Um, and then for my setup, I got a ThinkPad, I got a HackerF, and I've got Universal Radio Hacker 2.9, so if you're watching this in the future using Freepoint or whatever, uh, it might be a little different, keep that in mind. Uh, so, usually if you're looking at FCC listings, you can find a lot of information about your products. So say you have your phone. Well, your phone has an FCC listing, and it'll list out all the frequencies that your phone will listen on, and sometimes transmit as well, depending on what it is. Uh, you can also get internal photos of devices. You don't have to open up something to find out, that, hey, it has a serial port you want to jack into. For example, routers. Uh, that is a very useful treasure trove, and also sometimes you'll find like modulation documents or test reports, which can also kind of give you an idea of how much power a device uses or what kind of modulation the device uses, which can help you figure out what kind of software you need to use to decode it. And there's a useful website. Uh, you can pretty much type any FCC ID into it, and you'll get a lot of pictures and information for it. Uh, so, Here's the uh, bands that most likely you'll find devices on, even if you can't find your device there. You got 27 to 49, that's commonly used in like RC cars and other older devices. So if you're trying to find like a little cheap car that you're, you know, messing around with, check there. Key fobs and remotes, so like your car and stuff, you'll have a 315 or 433. Um, I will tell you, you cannot easily duplicate a car key. I mean, I think there was a Subaru that had an exploit where you could find their roll code, but most devices like that you can't just easily get into because of that. Uh, there are ways to capture the thing and then replay it later if the car didn't hear it. So you can actually intercept and, you know, do it that way. I'm not going to get into that. Then you have 900 megahertz, commonly found baby monitors and monitoring equipment, that kind of such. 2.4 gigahertz, you'll find Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a lot of other kind of devices that need a higher amount of bandwidth and are not just like simple remotes. Um, guarantee you used, used at least one of these bands in the past couple days, probably today. But anyway, this is what my device looks like. Um, if you look carefully, you can kind of see the spectrum. So it's an on-off frequency key, and you can see how it kind of has like the on-off bits. I'll get a better picture for later, um, but essentially your wave will look different depending on the modulation frequency you use. So uh, that's mine, and you can see it is at 433.9 megahertz. Um, and then here is Universal Radio Hacker. Universal Radio Hacker has this nice GUI you can record your signals in, 
And when I give a demo for it later, you'll see how that works. Uh, at this time, I used a Lima SDR, found out I wanted to change it. So you'll notice it says Lima SDR up there. But uh, using the record signal, you can record it, and then if you want to, you can play it back right afterward. I'll show that in the demo later, but it gives you a very easy GUI to capture your signal. You type the frequency and all that, and it shows up right there. And then, again, you can replay it, and it works like that. So, if you want to actually do something cool with your signal, kind of learn how it works, we can use the analysis tools that Universal Radio Hacker gives us. Now, this is the default settings that Universal Radio Hacker has. It is not going to work right away. So if you look down here, it should be a constant signal, but no, it isn't. It's got a lot of ones and zeros, ones. So you need to head these settings up here, and uh, once you adjust that and fine tune that, it'll look nice and neat, and you can actually see my signal right here. And I've actually, uh, well, looks like it's got a little uh, jumbled up, but you can see the one, zero, one, 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 zero, 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 zero. You can see that signal right there, and that's a uh, ASK modulation. So it's really easy to see on a spectrogram. So if we actually want to look deeper, we can actually see I've got uh, three different kinds of signals. Now, if you see here, everything is constant up to this point, and you got these last four or five bits, you can see there's a little difference in them. There's a one right here, there's a one right there, and there's a zero right there. That's a different command for each kind of uh, button that I have. So you can actually easily find out what's different because they give you an option to mark the differences in each command that's sent to the device. Um, then you can fuzz data. Uh, Universal Radio Hacker allows you to quickly generate like a thing to fuzz and find out what you're looking at. Um, for this demo, I'm not going to go into that because we'll spend too much time. But uh, essentially, that's how you can try to find hidden commands or you know break your neighbor's garage door opener or something. And then, yeah, that's what UHR URH is. Uh, that's a little idea of what you can do with it. And now I'd like to uh, go ahead and give you an idea of what it does with a demo. So I got my uh, hacker rep here. Um, so we're going to hook that up to my computer. And we're going to find the remote. And if I can hold it up right. And we're going to uh, show you what it looks like live on a frequency. Uh, and we'll see how that looks. So I'm just going to hook it up. GQRX, which is a uh, software defined radio application. Uh, so we're going to go down to what we know the frequency is probably going to be. on roughly 433, right around here. And you can actually see, see Yeah. I can have stop that. Uh, it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't <laughs> interfere. So I want to hit a button on here. We'll see that thing turn on as well. You can see my remote is right there. Now I'm going to go click on it, and we'll be able to get a precise idea of what frequency that is. It's about 433.896. So, I'd like to go into a universal radio hacker and try to clone that signal. So we're going to open it up. I like the command line. <laughs> I'm just going to drag that over. I'm going to make a record. It's really fun on the monitor here. I'm going to select the hacker up. Type in roughly what we saw. Now it can differ a little bit, and that has something to do with how the remote's made what like orientation the antennas are. So, you know, <clears throat> antennas are meant to go straight up. If it's slightly crooked sometimes, it can deviate your signal. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just my game. And now we're recording. So that's just uh, without any data going through. I'm gonna turn it on. That's my signal. We're gonna save that. Here we are 
in the analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and remove any extra data. Just get us down to the message. And now I'm going to attempt to perform a replay attack. And you should see this thing right over here will light up. Uh, just to prove that I'm not hitting the remote or something. It goes right there. We're going to go ahead and go over here to the replay button. And shoot. Don't you love technology? Uh, we're going to go to we're going to hit the start button, and hopefully we will see that device turn on. And as you can see, yeah. I successfully cloned that remote. And it's really easy. But now let's go deeper. Let's actually analyze the signal and see if we can make a sense of all this uh, jumbled bit. Um, for this example, I've already kind of figured out what we need to type in. Just because uh, you can't spend probably 10 minutes or so trying to figure out what you need to type in. It does have this auto detect parameter, but as you can see, it just messed it up, so I'm not going to use that. Uh, so I know I have roughly 2,000 uh, samples per symbol. Um, for this, I'm just going to remove extra repeated symbols just to kind of get us where we need to go. Um, so I'm going to adjust the thing here. And I hope at this point I should be able to just, you know, get an idea. I should be able to see a one, zero, one, one, one. I don't know if you can see it, but like right here, yeah, that's a lot better. It just kind of shows you what it is. Uh, again, for this demo, I'm not going to go too deep because you realize there is a zero there, and I probably need to go tweak this, uh, tweak the numbers for a bit, and that's just going to take too long. So. Uh, don't want to keep you here until like 5 o'clock. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we got our signal here. Um, that extra data shouldn't matter too much in terms of uh, trying to show you how this works. So I'm going to go record another signal for a different button. Now, I mean, there will be a little difference with consistency, so I hope that I get that correct. But I want to go record, I'm going to record another button, and we'll be able to see the differences between the two signals. It should be about the same parameters because we recorded it in the same environment and whatnot. So we got a very similar signal. If we're going to the analysis tool. Uh, looks like we have a couple zeros at the end which shouldn't be there. So I'll just uh, trim them off. And yeah, it's just blank data. And here is our two signals. Didn't get it all, but whatever. Uh, if you can see, they all look very similar. You got the 10111, you got the 101, but you got some difference here. You see, the one isn't there. So we got a different signal here. We know that's a different signal. So what I can do is I can hit this analyze protocol button, and we'll start to see some magic happen. Uh, sometimes it doesn't always work exactly how we want it. We have to manually define messages, but it will give you a quick idea of what you're looking at. It's not perfect. But it does work pretty well. Now I'm going to turn on the show differences feature. And immediately you can see that zero is now marked red. Now what I can do here is, uh, I know this is probably likely my data bits. I can mark it. Oops. Uh, I'm trying to remember where I go. Uh, but I can mark it somewhere. 
Oh, yeah, okay, never mind, I forgot. <laughs> we can mark it here as a data bit, and we can go fuzz that. Um, for the example here, I'm not actually going to fuzz uh, the uh, data, just because I don't want to try to interfere with any other devices here. But we'll take the signal, and we'll go to fuzzing, and select the data here. We're going to tell it that we want to fuzz just pretty much anything. A range of values. Get back here. There. Now we have probably a lot more buttons that we could hit. I could send this data back and it'll probably do something crazy. However, for this demo and for possibly anything else that might be out there. I'm not going to do that. That's kind of an idea of how Universal Radio Hacker works. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pop up the uh, slide where you can find more information. And thank you for viewing my presentation. What would be a good way to test that at home without, uh, like, is there a way to shield it without like uh, hitting everything or lower the power? So you can lower your power in the tool. Um, I just kind of picked the middle ground for power because I don't want to fill with that. Sure. You could also try to make a short antenna that's not going to be too efficient, but you know, uh, you'll have a little bit of range out of it, or you can just put it right next to the radio. I would not recommend using your radio without an antenna. That is something you don't ever do. Uh, you could also get a dummy load, which I didn't bring with me today. Um, but you got options. But typically, you just lower your power and until you can reach it. Like, you can probably test with the lowest power go up. Like that. Cool. Back where you were adjusting the settings for the signal and the bits and device, whatever, um, was that just a matter of just tinkering with it to find the right values, or yeah, is so, there an easier way rather than doing the auto detect? Piece? So the auto detect thing works on certain modulations. Yeah. I've noticed for my signal, it doesn't work too well. Sure. But I've done things with other remotes, like my car remote, and the auto tech work just fine. Okay. A lot of digital like oscilloscopes, like with time markers, right, to, to do bit counting, does it have the same feature? I don't believe so. It just tells you what the data it received was. Yes? So what is a device that like, just find you connected to your laptop? So this is a Hacker F1 with a port pack attached to it. Uh, it's a software-defined radio that can go from 3D megahertz to 6 gigahertz. Um, it can receive a, a large range of spectrum. He's got a box right there. I've got the uh, port pack attached to it, which is a device that adds a screen to your Hacker F, and it runs a portable radio suite, basically. And it runs all on the chip, allows you to receive a lot of different kind of modulated frequencies, and it's really useful on the go or in the field. You have a headphone jack on the bottom that allows you to really just uh, listen or transmit on radio just out where you are. So I think it's really nice. And it only costs about 300 bucks. Is there a high there? What kind of computer is actually? It's just the Hacker F. The Hacker F has a... Oh, yeah, and it has like GPIO hooked up to it. Nice. Running a custom firmware. Nice. Any other questions? All right. There's my information. That QR code leads to the SecKC Discord where you can find me often in the ham radio uh, channel. Um, I'm glad you listened to my presentation. Thank you. Woo! Yeah!